Wild horse? Wild horse. Wild West gravel, wild horses, and the buried splendor of Colorado's western slope. Roll My Seas Wild Horse Gravel kicks off May 11th, and I'm out here today with my friends and gravel gurus, Kristen and Nick Legan, to ride the course to tell you what to expect in terms of the surfaces, in terms of the time segments, what to bring, what to eat, and how we're gonna take care of you. You ready? Let's roll. So first off, let's talk about what a sportive is. It is not a race. It is not time to start to finish. We have two time segments and those you can take as seriously or as frivolously as you like. The first time segment starts a little after mile five and goes up to about mile 12. It's a sort of gentle uphill grade for the first part. Uh, roads generally nice and smooth. Then we get a little bit of surprising uh, downhill, some ruts, some big rocks uh, before we, we, we top out at the top of the KOM, QOM section. Be careful. Uh, throughout the whole course, but especially right after that first KOM because it's a little gnarly on the descent. So again, this is not a race, people. Uh, we're just out here to have a good time. Uh, so take it easy, take care of yourself, take care of your friends, you know, just like any other group ride, call out obstacles. There's some good sized ruts, there's some giant holes out there, there's a little bit of everything. The whole course goes down to the beck. It's not downhill all the way. There are a lot of uphill kickers on the way to the, the downhill. But once in the beck, big feed stop there, uh, take on supplies, and at that point you can make the call, do I want to just ride for another 15 miles or do I want to turn around and climb another, what, 3,500 feet? The second time segment begins if you're doing the long course, uh, about mile 45, and goes a long way up uh, back to where the first KOM, QOM ended and we're gonna take uh, cumulative times for both those segments and the first, second, and third uh, folks will get some prizes from Shimano. Uh, first prize will be a pair of the really snazzy Shimano S-Fire kicks we've been riding in today. Second prize will be a Laser Z1 helmet that we were also riding in today. And then if you like the glasses on Ben's head, third place, you can sandbag for third and get a pair of those. Yeah. You can expect a little bit of everything out there from smooth dirt roads where you feel like you could ride a road bike on and then some really chunky big rocks in the road. You're gonna get a little bit of everything. So at times you're gonna think, oh, I wanted to ride my mountain bike. Sometimes you're gonna think, oh, I could have ridden my road bike. It's a little bit, you know, it's, it's your choice out there and, and you can't go wrong. Well, yeah, if you have a road bike and you have a mountain bike, if you're riding this all day, i definitely say bring the mountain bike. Obviously, if you've got a gravel bike or a bike that fits like a 40 mil tire, that's probably ideal. So, Nick, tire choice. What would you recommend people to do as far as you know, width or tread pattern or sure. tire pressure or tubeless versus tube? Definitely want to be tubeless, whatever you're doing. Um, if, it's gonna, if it looks like it's going to be dry, I'd put the biggest tire you can fit on your bike. It's, it really is pretty rough out there. We were all riding 38 to 40 mil tires, but we were all riding tubeless, and we were all riding a pretty fast rolling tire. But I think going with something a little more treaded isn't going to be a bad thing. Um, it, it is chunky out there. Kristen, how about some tips on how to ride some of the different types of terrain? I mean, you have to just look ahead. That's the biggest yeah. thing. You can't be staring at the person in front of you. You have to be looking ahead, see where the ruts are going, and then try and make your, your path uh, to go around that or you know, get up and over those. Um, they sneak up on you fast. They can be kind of hard to see sometimes, so you really have to be paying attention. This is not as beautiful as the scenery is. This is not a course where you want to just be looking off into the, into the sunset there. Uh, you have to be watching the road, um, planning for those ruts. Uh, we also had some sand there, and uh, so staying loose on the sand, making sure you're just keeping your body relaxed on top of it. Your bike might squirm a little bit, but it's all about just letting your, your tires and your bike do the work. You know, positioning your body, you definitely want to be um, like low and kind of uh, aggressive on your bike. You don't want to be sitting straight upright. Um, use your use your drops. If you're you know if you're riding your gravel bike, you want to be in your drops. You're going to have more control. You're going to have a little bit more leverage down there, um, and it's a lower center of gravity, so you're going to just feel a little bit better off of on that loose stuff. One thing I've loved about riding this area is the diversity of the topography like the terrain of the road, the, you know, the mountainsides and the hillsides have a little bit of everything too. You know, we've got yeah. 
10,000 foot peaks behind us still covered in snow up at Grand Mesa. Uh, there's oranges and purples and yellows in the rock. I don't know what was going on there, yeah. but yeah, certainly a lot to, to look at. One cool thing about our little sporty format is that, and if you're doing the out and back, is that you can race part of it one time, and then the next time through, just take it easy, pull over, enjoy this beautiful place, enjoy the fact that the clock is no longer running. Even if the clock is running, pull over. I don't care. This is your thing. Do do it how you like. But there's you know, certainly a lot to uh, to enjoy here. In addition to riding and racing all over the world for years and years, you've been coaching people, telling them what to do. Tell me what to do for clothing choices. Pack it what all. Should I bring? <laughs> Pack it all. Literally, though, I think I think you know, bringing more than you think you need is a good idea, and making a game day decision based on the weather um, is never a bad idea. You know, this is Colorado weather can move in quickly. Um, afternoon storms, we're not quite there in May, but afternoon storms are pretty frequent, so uh, just be ready. And if we all have rain jackets, you know, Murphy's Law will apply. Right. Right. So, so, don't so do, your do your part, do your part in Murphy's Law and bring the gear so we can all enjoy the day. <laughs> in addition to the great riding, we're also gonna have a great party going on here throughout the weekend. It starts Friday evening as folks are checking in for camping or cabins. We'll have live music going. There'll be a food truck here if you're getting in early enough to have some dinner. You do that with us. Saturday morning, uh, wake up and the chefs here will be cooking breakfast for everyone. That's included with the registration. Then we'll start off all together. Uh, come back in the afternoon. Again, food truck if you get back early. Uh, of course, you're welcome to bring your own food. And then we've got a country cookout that will start early afternoon goes all the way through the evening. Come for the gravel ride and stay for the party. We look forward to seeing you here at the High Lonesome Ranch for Wild Horse Gravel.